What's up guys, this is Adam with TAT Express and in this video I'm going to discuss the proper procedures on greasing a semi. Guys, this is an educational video so if you like this type of content be sure to hit that like, subscribe and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release new video. Guys, I'm going to be discussing what type of grease gun to use, what type of grease and what's the frequency on greasing your truck. We are servicing at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas 75241. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. TAT Express is also hiring. We offer competitive pay, up-to-date equipment, and complimentary breakfast every Friday. If you feel like you can bring value to our team as a service rider or a technician, be sure to apply on our careers page or give us a call. Let's get right into this video. Okay guys, so grease in a truck can be very dirty, so it's very important to keep, uh, keep aware of where your hose is at all times. Make sure it's not slapping around. You don't know where it is. It can brush against your leg or anything like that. First, we're gonna start with greasing on the top and then I'm gonna go ahead and lift the truck up so we can get a better view on the bottom. But first I wanna discuss, there's different types of grease guns. This is a pneumatic gun. Since we have so many trucks that we grease daily, uh, that's why we have a bigger keg. But if you, if you wanna run a smaller grease gun, a manual gun, or a battery operated gun, that will also work for you as well. There's a lot of different manufacturers of grease, but right now this is what we're using, which is uh, Mystic High Temp Grease. As long as it's high temp, most of the time it's gonna be red. So that's the type of grease you're gonna be looking for. And another thing I'd like to mention, on the, whether, whether it's a pneumatic gun, a battery operated gun, or, or a manual gun, you wanna have a flexible end hose here. Now it's very important because there's some tight areas that you're gonna wanna bend in and get this hose to be able to turn it. And with a rigid hose, you're not gonna be able to do that. And if possible, if you are in a shop environment, you want a hose with, flat, with swivels on both ends, this just makes it easier for the hose to be able to be controlled, having a solid base to move the, the jug around if you're running a keg. If not, like I said, if you're running a handheld, just be sure to have a, a swivel, a couple rags, and some gloves. Since I'm going to be raising a truck up, I'm not going to be using a creeper. Of course, most of the guys are going to be needing a creeper to be able to get up under the truck and grease it. Now, you want to grease your truck most of the time. It's going to be every PM. Depending on how long you're doing your PMs, this is going to be either monthly or, or every other month. Keeping a, a, good, a good preventive maintenance and greasing your truck is very important. There's a lot of different areas I'm going to show you. you got your, your tie rod ends, your king pins. You also have your, your throwout bearing, your throwout bearing on your clutch and most importantly, your S cams and your slack adjusters. If these items do not get greased properly, they can seize and not function correctly. Okay, so let's get started with greasing the top of the truck. Okay, so this is the top view of the kingpin on the passenger side. We're gonna go ahead and grease this top side. This is how we start. You wanna go ahead and clean the grease nipple off because you don't wanna get any dirt inside the fitting. Once you have that cleaned off, you set the grease tip on the nipple, hold it down. You're only gonna wanna go ahead and grease this for a few seconds, maybe two or three until it, you see it come out just a hair. So as you can see, it didn't actually go inside the nipple there. So this is why it's important to either carry a rag or a towel, kinda get that extra grease off. This is something that you could probably put back on the, uh, to, to spread it on the fifth wheel. But since that didn't go through here, we're gonna try again. Hold this fitting on there solid. Now, as you see it coming out of the joint here, that's, that's what you want. You don't want more than that. The same with the S-cam. Go ahead and clean the nipple off. Set the fitting on there. And just go ahead and tap it. Okay, so sometimes grease, this grease can be tough to get in these fittings. So you gotta kinda hold it in an angle, get it in there, see if you can get it to come through the joint there. What I'm feeling around for on this S-cam is a fitting for grease. I can already see grease coming out of the joints here. What we wanna do is just go ahead and clean up this extra grease. Like I said, it can get pretty messy. Now let's move over to the driver's side. We're gonna be doing the same procedures pretty much on all four corners of the truck. Okay guys, so we're at the rear of the truck and this is where I see most of uh, a lot of grease that gets over greased and uh, is here on the fifth wheel. What I wanna do is just show you, you don't wanna uh, put grease all the way more than half up the fifth wheel. You wanna just set it down here at the bottom in this area and this area. And I mean, it's a good to put a, few, a good few beads, but just don't overdo it. Don't bring it all the way up to here, all the way up to the top. Whenever the truck connects to the trailer and you're full of grease, 
as soon as that trailer hits the back of the fifth wheel, it's going to scrape all that extra grease all the way to the front of the fifth wheel and just dump it on the, on the front axle or on the, on the rear of the, of the drive shaft and it's just going to sling it everywhere and make a big mess. So what we're going to do is put beads here at the bottom of the fifth wheel so whenever the trailer connects, it's just going to slide the grease evenly over the, over the fifth wheel. Okay, so we're going to apply a few beads. If I'm greasing the fifth wheel from one side of the truck, usually I'm going to grease the further side away from me, point it down because sometimes it could come out pretty, pretty fast. And like I said, we're just going to put a few beads here at the bottom. So when that trailer connects, it's just going to spread the rest of it. And you want to grease the side that's away from you first just to uh, avoid getting any on your shirt if when you reach, when you, whenever you're reaching for the other the other side. So this is going to be enough grease. If a driver wants more grease, if you're working at a shop, you can add more grease, but just kind of explain to him it could get it could get smeared all the way up to the front, especially if you if I run these beads uh, more a lot tighter and, and, and thicker and, and run it all the way up to the fifth wheel, like I said, boom, it's going to scrape it, dump it all in the front. So that's how you grease the fifth wheel. Other areas on greasing the truck is right here where the fifth wheel actually, where the kingpin actually meets in here to the fifth wheel. If this one, it's already have enough grease, so I'm not gonna add any more grease. Some of these fifth wheels are gonna have grease fittings on the side. You can kind of just fill around for them. And this is just for the, the, uh, the, the pivot here. But if, there's, if they're not going to have them, then, then you're not going to have to worry about that. You can add a little bit of grease here where the fifth wheel, if, if they are sliding the fifth wheel, you can just add just a little bit there on the front and the back. If they ever slide that fifth wheel, that way they can have a little bit less friction there whenever they need to slide that, that, uh, that fifth wheel if needed. So let's move on to the next part of the truck and continue to grease this truck out. So we're up under the truck right now. We have the truck overhead, as you can see. Now, I understand this is not gonna be something that everything, everybody can do, but if you're under a creeper, I just kinda wanted to give you a view. Now, we're looking at this particular truck here. I can see that the PTO cover is leaking oil, so what we would recommend is this transmission get, get, uh, get resealed, especially with this happening here. He does have a high temp. Uh, he has a temperature sensor here, which is could save the transmission if, if his fluid was gone. When you're greasing the truck, since we're talking about greasing the truck, this, there's a grease nipple that goes here and is to this fitting. And what that grease nipple does, it leads to the throwout bearing on the, on the clutch. Now, since this one doesn't have one, we're gonna recommend that he gets a, a, a line installed because what's gonna happen is if this, particular, if this particular fitting doesn't get installed and the throwout bearing just continues to run dry, the clutch can fail at a sooner sooner rather than later. So it's very important to have that. This is a hydraulic setup, so he's not gonna have any grease fittings for the clutch fork. But if you do, if you do have a truck that doesn't have a hydraulic, a hydraulic clutch, uh, clutch actuator, then you're gonna have to grease the fittings here. Okay, so the next thing we're moving over to is a drive shaft. One thing I wanted to mention that I didn't mention earlier is once you're under the truck, you might not have as good lighting as this. So it's good to invest and a good headlamp so that your hands are free. You have two hands. You want safety glasses because once you're under the truck and you knock off some dirt or knock off some of this rust, it's definitely gonna fall on your eye and it is very uncomfortable. What I wanted to mention with this particular drive shaft on the U-joints, you're gonna come across dry U-joints where they don't have grease fittings. Now, if the truck has high mileage and a lot of, of, of corrosion, as you can see, you have corrosion here, you have a bunch of rust build up on the DEF box cover here and a little bit on the transmission. I would recommend, and, and, and there are fittings to, uh, that you can install on these U-joints. I would, I would recommend to the customer to go ahead and install U-joints, U-joint grease fittings because you wanna go ahead and keep these grease. And when you grease them, all you're gonna do, anytime you grease anything on a truck, on any of these nipples, you don't wanna hold the grease for a very long time to ho hold the gun down for a very long time. You just want to squeeze it enough where it comes out of the seals and that's, a, and that's it. This, the same with, with once this line is installed, you only want to go about two seconds, three seconds max. You don't want to go any, any more than that. Let's move over to the, the tie rod ends in the front of the truck and the lower kingpins and get those greased up as well. Okay, so we are on the driver's side 
uh, driver's side of the truck, this is the lower kingpin and tie rod in. Now, when, whenever you're greasing these, sometimes these grease, this grease won't go in, sometimes it will. So just hold, it, hold the, the grease down for just a second when you apply it. Don't hold it down too long. All you want is enough grease to come out of the, the crevices here. You don't want to over grease it. Hold that fitting on there. Uh, make sure to clean the fitting off first like I just did. You don't want to get any dirt jammed in there. So hold, hold it on there pretty stiff. Sometimes it's going to kick back like that. If it does, just readjust and then keep pumping it. Sometimes it's going to come out like this. So you want to have a rag to go ahead and clean that off. Sometimes these fittings are going to be a little bit seized up. So that's why they don't accept grease. But I can already see grease coming out of the crevices here. Uh, from the kingpins and that's going to be enough as soon as it starts coming out that's going to be enough you don't want to go any more than that it's going to it can make a mess it's good to keep rags towels most of the time to keep uh, the extra grease you don't want it to get too much on your hands or or on your clothes and, and let it fall on the floor because it can get really messy okay now we're going to move over to the tie rod end clean off the nipple just like we did before hold that on there now this one's going to have a boot you're going to see the boot kind of swell up a little bit once you see the boot swell up, that's enough. You don't want to put too much in, and uh, have too much grease come out of it because that boot is there to kind of save the, uh, save, save the water from getting inside there. Okay, so the next section we're going to be greasing is the S-cam housing and the slack adjuster. This is going to be the same procedures for the rear. Make sure you don't skip that. You, as you can see, there's not a grease fitting on this particular slack adjuster. You can add one by taking this this fitting out and adding a, a, a grease nipple. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and, and grease that. As I mentioned, sometimes the grease won't go in. You only wanna hold it down just for a little bit just to ensure that we're not applying too much. As you can see, it doesn't seem like too much got in there. Here we go again. Now it's not receiving any grease. I would recommend replacing this nipple anytime you have uh, an issue like this where the grease is not wanting to go in there. Even though we got grease coming out, he, he may be all right for now because he's already got grease here. So it's not as if it's super dry, but definitely want to get that replaced and also get a nipple added into this slack adjuster. So try it again and if it's still acting up, then it's something that may need to be taken apart and, and greased up because you don't want to run it too long dry because what's going to happen is it's, this S-cam can seize up and so can this and you can have some either brakes dragging or not working correctly and causing out of service. So the next section we're going to grease is the drag link. This is what connects the steering gear box to your actual wheel and so that you can turn the truck. As you can see this is already has tons of grease on it. I'm not going to grease it too much but you're going to have a nipple on each end. You got one that's connected here to the steering gear box and then on this side of the other where it's connected to the wheel. So same thing, pump a little bit of grease in here, see if it takes it. Now this one seems like it's taking it. Once you see the boot kind of swell up a little bit, that's enough. You don't want to go any more than that. So clean the nipple off. And we're going to grease this rear one and do the same thing. As soon as the boot kind of swells up a little bit, as I can already see, we're going to go ahead and stop greasing it there. Now, the next one you're gonna grease, we're gonna can lower the truck down. Do the same on both sides, on all the brakes, S-cam, slack adjusters, uh, all the way down, every U-joint down to the drive shaft, all the way down to the rear if you have grease fittings. This one doesn't have grease fittings, but we would recommend putting some if you have high mileage, especially if you have a lot of, a lot, a lot of corrosion on the truck. Okay, guys, so the last section we're gonna be greasing is gonna be the gearbox. I already did the drag link down at the bottom. Sometimes you'll have grease fittings here on these smaller U-joints here, these smaller universal joints here at the bottom and the top. But this particular gearbox only has a grease fitting here at the front of the gearbox. So we're just gonna stick that in there and see if it's gonna receive grease. See, I'm not sure if it's, it's gonna be this tip. Sometimes you can have a tip that doesn't wanna let grease in. So make sure to try different tips. Okay, the same with this one. Once you apply the grease, you're gonna wait just till it comes out of the crevices here. You don't wanna get any, any more than that. Well guys, I hope this information was useful if you're looking to grease your semi. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. 
TAT is located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas 75241. TAT Express is also hiring, so if you'd like to apply, you can check out our careers page or give us a call. We offer competitive pay, up-to-date equipment, and complimentary breakfast every Friday. Guys, this is an educational video, so if you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified every time we release a new video or go live. Guys, until next time, be safe.